All right, it's now 2.03, so I imagine most people have made their way in. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining the NCDEQ for our Division of Air Quality Grants How to File a Claim webinar. My name is Matthew Hoskins. I'm the Clean Heavy Duty Program Manager, and I'm joined by several additional DAQ staff who manage other aspects of the VW Settlement and the DERA program. So with me, we have Sheila Blanchard, she is the program manager for the school bus and DERA programs. We have Stephen Rice, the program manager for the level two EV charger program. We have Dave Willis, the program manager for the DC fast EV charger program. And we also have Brian Phillips. He is the mobile source supervisor and the program manager for the transit bus program. So a few housekeeping rules before we get started. All attendees will be muted during the webinar. Questions can be submitted in the Q&A box, and they will be addressed during the question and answer session at the end if it is not covered during the presentation. The raised hand feature will be disabled until the question and answer time, and will only be considered for those who called into the webinar by phone. So for those of you calling in, you can press star three to raise your hand, and pressing star three again will lower your hand. All other attendees must use the Q&A box to submit their questions. Also, just a heads up, this webinar is being recorded and it will be made available on the DAQ Volkswagen website at a later date. Finally, we have two hours to discuss the claims process, but if we are not able to answer everything, um, then we'll have opportunities for y'all to reach out to us afterwards. Hopefully we can get through everything and adjourn with a little bit extra time. So before we get into what to expect today, let me explain why everybody was invited to this webinar. So everyone here should have an open contract with the Division of Air Quality for a project in the Volkswagen Mitigation Program or in the DERA Program. And so they will eventually need to create a claim in the grants management system in order to receive reimbursement. And so in order to help everybody out with this process, we're gonna go through a few of the key points on how to successfully file for a claim with the Division of Air Quality. So first, we're gonna give a brief overview of some of the necessary steps to file for a claim, as well as discuss the reporting requirements involved in all of these projects. Next, we'll go through some of the necessary documents that are required to submit a claim. We're gonna break it down into the specifics for the diesel vehicle programs, as well as the EV infrastructure programs. Finally, we're going to go through a step-by-step -step demo of how to use the grants management system to create a claim, and we'll show you where to attach all the documents and how to get everything submitted. After that, we're gonna have a Q&A session, answer all of your questions, and we'll show you where you can find more information after this workshop. So to begin, we'll talk about the grants management system. This is the online portal that the Division of Air Quality uses. That's how we manage all of our grants. So that's where people submit their applications. That's where we process contracts. That's where people submit claims. Um, We'll probably just call this the GMS throughout the webinar. So if we say GMS, that's the grants management system. Uh, somebody in your organization should probably already have access to the GMS if you got an application submitted. Um, so I recommend that they try to log into the system just to make sure. I know that people can get locked out of their accounts if they don't get logged into the system. So. Whoever that is that has access, uh, we recommend trying that sooner rather than later. Um, and if you do find yourself locked out, we're gonna go over the steps to recover access to your account later in the webinar. Um, so just a real quick note about the GMS, whenever you are uploading documents into it, um, we would ask that you name these files in a way that tells us what the file is and later in the webinar, we'll go through more of a detailed presentation of where to put these. 
So one thing that we want to encourage all of our awardees to do is to complete and submit the vendor electronic payment form. Uh, this form allows us to disperse payments more quickly and securely rather than having to send out a paper check. So if you would like access to this form, you can find it on the claims portion of our website. Plus, it will be here linked in the slides whenever these are posted. And if you want to register for electronic payment, you should note that you have to send this form to the North Carolina Office of State Controller Support Services Center and not to the Division of Air Quality. If you send it to the Division of Air Quality, we're going to tell you to send it to the Office of State Controller instead. Uh, and they'll have instructions listed on that document for you to review whenever you're ready to submit it. So for reporting requirements, all of our grant projects are going to require quarterly reports throughout the project period and then a final report upon completion of the project. In these quarterly reports, we're basically asking for a general update on how the project is going, including some of the tasks that were completed, any challenges that were encountered, and an update of the overall timeline of how the project's going. These reports are to be submitted within 14 days of the end of each quarter, the ends of the quarters being March 31st, June 30th, September 30th, and December 31st. Uh, the final project report is very similar to these quarterly reports, but it should include a more narrative summary of the project, uh, the overall results and the outcomes of the project, as well as some of the successes and lessons learned. All unsubmitted quarterly reports have to be turned in before a claim can be processed. So when you're ready to submit your claim, check with your program manager and ensure that you have submitted all of your quarterly reports. For the final, final reports, um, they must be included when submitting a claim. So final claims must include the final report. What we mean by that is if you have multiple vehicles in your project and you're submitting a claim for just a certain bunch of vehicles that you have received already, go ahead and submit a final report for those vehicles. And then when you get to the next batch of vehicles, you can submit an additional final report for those. All of your reports should be submitted to your program manager, the one you've been working with throughout the whole project period. And we will have some contact information for each program manager at the end of this presentation. If you need a template for the required project reports, you can check on our website linked below. Um, we've got all of the all of the settlement forms listed right there. So before I hand this off, uh, I wanted to quickly show everybody this new interactive map that showcases the success stories for electrification projects that have been funded by the by the Volkswagen program. The map highlights some of our completed level two and DC fast projects, as well as some of the completed all electric school buses and transit buses. So jump right into it here. So this is the interactive map. It starts with the welcome screen, tells you a little bit about how to use it. And basically the point of this is it shows locations of where we have funded projects that deal with vehicle electrification. So the yellow ones are school buses, green ones are transit buses, and the different colors of blue are all the different chargers that we have funded around the state. Now these are only some of the completed ones. We're going to be adding more as they come in and as we receive pictures and written up success stories. So this is what we have for now, and you can see when you choose a location on this map, it shows you some of the pictures of what this project location looks like. So for this one in the town of Apex, you can see the location, you can see the charger, and you sort of just get a better idea of what each project looks like. Um, this map also, also tells you more information about how much funding was provided to these projects, what the overall 
reduction in nitrogen oxides is and more about just what the project is and what it's doing. It'll also include a written up success story that's been submitted by the awardee. Um, for some of them, not all of them have them. And so this one's for the town of Apex. You can just read a little bit more about what they've done. And also for some, there's a link at the bottom that will take you to if there's any sort of newspaper article or news article written about them. Uh, the link will take you to that and you can just kind of see more about it and read more about it from their perspective. So we have a link to that in the slides here. Um, also at the bottom of the page, there's a place where you can submit your success story. So if you're in the process of submitting your claim and you want to share all the successes that you had with it, you can click on the link in this, or you can reach out to your program manager and ask for it. And that way you can tell your own story and talk about how this uh, funding program worked for you. So now I'm going to hand it off to Sheila Blanchard to give an overview of the claims documentation specific to the diesel vehicle programs. If you have any questions, go ahead and type them into the Q&A box and we can answer them at the end. So Sheila. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is Sheila. I know a lot of y'all from the school bus program um, and the DERA. I am the school bus administrator and the diesel emissions uh, grant state administrator for, um, for grants. I'm gonna go over the paperwork that is needed um, in order for you to submit a claim for reimbursement. For the Volkswagen programs and the DERA programs, these are the same. The requirements are the same. The timing is a little bit different. And for infrastructure, you have you have some different requirements if you have an EV project that requires infrastructure. Um, we're gonna go over all that today. So let's get let's just jump right in. In the diesel replacement programs, you're replacing Sheila? the vehicle. Yes. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. We're not seeing the slides on your end. You're not. Ah. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, we got it. All right. Um, hold on. Let me. <laughs> I have lost. Okay, I guess I don't get to navigate. Okay, right back into it. So, in order to um, submit a claim, you have to have the following documents. Um, and I'm going to go through this and then we'll have, there's a checklist online if you need to just go through and make sure that you have all the photos and all the paperwork. Um, but I'm going to go through all of the documents and then I'm going to give you examples for what those documents look like. The first thing we need is a signed payment request on your letterhead for the amount to be reimbursed. This is the amount that will go in the claim box when you go into the GMS and you ask for the amount of money. Um, and this will be uh, exact, that amount will match exactly what's on this, this payment request. Uh, the next thing we need are copies of detailed invoices for all eligible project costs. These invoices should match what's in that claim and what's in that letter. We need proofs of payment of all eligible project costs. So this is that your organization has in fact paid that invoice. Um, we need a certificate of destruction for the vehicle that has been replaced. We need a certificate of purchase that, that um, tells us the meta information of the vehicle that has been purchased. And then we need a bunch of photos of everything. We need photos of the old vehicle. We need photos of the new vehicle. We need photos of the infrastructure, if applicable. And we need photos of the scrappage, which I will talk about a little bit later. Finally, some other stuff that we need from your organization. We are going to need an updated NCW9. Y'all may or may not know that our um, organization has just recently um changed some of our financial accounting so we have to re we have to get those forms for you in order for you to get reimbursed so go ahead and send that along with your claim 
we need a final report as Matthew, uh, as Matthew told you a final report for the project. You may submit a claim for a vehicle and infrastructure if if you have multiple vehicles in your um, in your project. Um, I ask that that both the infrastructure and the vehicle be submitted in one claim because we have to know the infrastructure is funding the vehicle. We have to know the vehicle is in service. So these things are related and you're welcome to send to give us a report. Um, you're welcome to submit a claim for one of those vehicles at a time and then the next vehicle. Um, and then do a final report whenever you do your final reimbursement, your final vehicle. And finally, we ask uh, for a success story um, at the end of your project. So this is the checklist, um, and I know it looks a little overwhelming, but if you download this and go through it, and we even give you, this is even how you can name the files that we've asked you to upload into the GMS. Um, it, this should make it pretty easy for you to know that you have everything that you need um, for the claim. And it's good that you, that you know exactly what you need, especially with these um, photos. We don't want you to get, to go ahead and scrap a vehicle and, and then you don't have the photos necessary for those claims. So, so make sure that you're being very diligent about um, now about getting this information. Okay, so what does this payment request look like? We've got an example online. We even have a template that you can download and you can fill in with your, your particular information. It's essentially a business letter on letterhead that says, please reimburse my company the amount um, that you're asking for in the claim. We ask for the total amount spent. And this is because for most Dira projects and for some Volkswagen projects, we have required, we either have a mandatory or a voluntary cost share. So that cost share must be reflected in this award letter. Therefore, if you were um, awarded 75% of the amount for the project, and you had to pay 25% for that project, the total that's in the invoices and the amount you're requesting must reflect that required cost share. So this is true even if your project um, is over budget. You cannot ask for more than what was granted. However, if your project is under budget and you had a cost share, you cannot ask for more than what that cost share, uh, that awarded cost share or awarded what we would pay. All right, so an example of this is if you only spent $110,000 $110, on your project, you had a 25% uh, cost share, you can only request $75,000 for your reimbursement. And this is even if you had an award amount over $75,000. Okay, if you have any questions about that, talk to your program manager. Next thing we need are the invoices. These are coming from the vendors. Um, for vehicles, it's really straightforward. We, we pay for um, taxes, delivery, everything on this itemized invoice. If you have infrastructure, we ask for an itemized invoice of the installation and the equipment. You may or may not know, DIRA pays for different things than Volkswagen. Um, so we need to, we need those itemized line invoices so we know what we can pay for, what the total you spent was, and then we can calculate those cost shares from the invoices. Um, we need a proof of payment. This can come in many forms. This is a screenshot of an electronic payment. Um, you could have a canceled check. Steven's going to show you a few more that we've seen. You can have an invoice that says paid with the date, with the, with a rubber stamp. All of those things will suffice as a proof of payment. This is so we know that your organization has paid for, paid the invoice and has received the equipment. These are some internal documents that we require for our, uh, for these replacement programs. The first thing that we need is a certificate of destruction. This is the metadata on the, on the vehicle that you have scrapped and you have destroyed and you have replaced by the new vehicle that we that uh, we have granted you for this uh, it's important that you fill out everything in this form we will not um, accept your claim if you haven't given us all this information this information is necessary for us to do the emissions mitigation benefits requirement 
underneath the beneficiary mitigation plan as well as under the DRO program. So we need to know um, we need to know this information so we can make those emissions uh, do those emissions analyses. The verification of purchase is the same. Um, we need the information of the new vehicle and the new engine as well as an authorized name and an authorized signature from your organization. If you see on the bottom, we have another, we have a space um, where we have the list of the, of the kinds of photos that we need to accompany these documents. Um, so if you ever need to refer to them, you can refer to them here. One question we get about dismantling or scrappage is what is um, how you can do it. You can, you can um, certainly do the scrappage in house and then have the dismantler sign it as yourself, or you can have it dismantled by a professional um, scrappage or a professional um, reclamation, vehicle reclamation or steel reclamation place. Um, and, and those just have to be signed um, by that dismantler. We do, like I said, we have a lot of required photos. We need photos of not only the new vehicle, but photos of the replaced vehicles. We're gonna need engine tags from both. We need VIN tags from both. We need a front picture and a side picture. And then for a replacement vehicle, we need the accompanying infrastructure if we funded that. Um, and I'm gonna give you some examples of these. These are the engine tags. Um, so on the left, we have a new one. On the right, we have an old one. These pictures are clear so that we can see the actual family of the engine. We can see the model from this information and the serial number. We can, we can get a lot of the information to do our, our emissions analysis. Um, so make sure that those engine tags are clear, um, that they're readable. If you have an issue with an engine tag, an old one, say it's rusted, um, please talk to your program manager uh, to find out what what we can do in that in that case. The VIN, obviously, we need to know the vehicle identification number for all new and replaced vehicles. As you can see, these 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 VINs are readily um, readable from these photos. Please do not send us photos that we have to bring out a microscope or or whatever to see, like we, we need to be able to read the VIN, we need to be able to tie it to your application, and we also need to be able to tie it to your claim and the invoice paperwork that you have submitted. Finally, these are the easy ones. You just take pictures of the new equipment or the new vehicle, um, as well as its charging, uh, charging infrastructure if it was funded. Um, we also ask for the serial number of the infrastructure. I get a lot of questions about scrappage. Scrappage is a specific process that is defined by both DIRA and the Volkswagen um, programs. These are in the RFP, these are in your contracts. Uh, if you do not scrap the vehicle, you will not be reimbursed. If you do not provide evidence of scrappage of the vehicle, I mean, we cannot reimburse you either. So please make sure that you pay attention to these photos. And um, and make sure that that you give us clear photos that that we can that we can um, use to reimburse you. For Volkswagen, vehicles must be scrapped within six months of receipt of the new vehicle, or when that vehicle uh, gets put into service. So sometimes a vehicle will sit on a lot for a few weeks before um, it starts the duty cycle. Um, so you've got some time there. For Dira, Dira is much more. Um, in general, the DRO programs are much more uh, stringent when it comes to things like scrappage and and um, putting things into service. You only get three months for DRA. We will look at uh, the timing of this, so make sure that if you have procured those vehicles that you are doing the scrappage. Finally, if you have questions about which vehicles must be scrapped, you can find that in your award letter as well, and, and it'll tell you the unit, you can refer to your application in the GMS, the, that award letter, as well as um, the, the spreadsheet that you had to fill out for your application are all found in your contract. Uh, it tells you which vehicles must be scrapped. Uh, those vehicles that are scrapped should match 
will match if you want to get reimbursed the photos that you have submitted, the destruction paperwork that you submitted, all of that should be um, what you had, what you agreed to scrap as part of uh, the grant. So scrappage is a defined process for rendering an engine or vehicle permanently disabled. So this includes drilling a three inch hole or larger in the engine um, and cutting the rails of the chassis in half. Some photos uh, from past projects. These are the before. You need a before photo of all of, of the engine block. These are before photos. You can see they're clear. We can see the engine block. And then you see that we have the holes um, in both the engines. And then the one on the right includes uh, the chassis that has been cut through. Um, these are really clear photos. You want to make sure that we can see that, that the engine block has been completely uh, rendered unusable. And a, a hole in an engine block will do that. OK, so that's what we need to see from these photos. Make sure that they're clear. Make sure that you bring a light if you need one um, to illuminate where um, these circles are uh, or these holes are, um, and you should be fine. We have another example of the of the hole in the engine block. You can tell that that's a, a fairly large um, hole after the destruction. The chassis, so the chassis must be clean cut through. Um, we won't accept any. Uh, claims that don't have the chassis completely immobilized, and that's both rails. The chassis doesn't necessarily have to be a dual chassis system. It could be, um, you know, a single, a single rail that will suffice. But believe me, we know when this this is not going anywhere. Um, so make sure that you sh that your photos show that very explicitly. Um, so you can see here to the left that the chassis on, it's it's in a it's in a slightly different position in this vehicle um, has been uh, has been cut in cut in half in the front. Um, one thing I one thing that um, we do have to have happen before you can get reimbursement is that um, we have to make a site visit to verify the project completion or the vehicle replacement um, if you want to do it per vehicle. Uh, we have to lay hands on the new vehicle. We do not have to see the old vehicle. We do not have to see the scrap vehicle. That should be um, that should be obvious from the photos that you have that you have sent to us as well as that certificate of destruction which has a signature on it. Um, we do have to see the new one. We have to verify that the new one is in fact um, working, can charge if it's an electric vehicle, and that it matches the VIN that's in your claim. Site visits must be conducted during our regular business hours, which are eight to five. Um, the equipment must be readily available for inspection. We will not go to dangerous sites. We will not go on work sites. You must pull that vehicle and put it into a place where we can go see it. It really doesn't take very long. We take a, a couple of photos. We get up and take the VIN, a VIN picture um, to, to take a look. And we, talk, and we talk to you a little bit about your experience and, and if you're um, and how the equipment's doing. Um, so we ask, uh, you can actually arrange a site visit anytime you've taken delivery of the new equipment. It doesn't have to happen with the claim, but you cannot get reimbursed until we do that site visit. So you can schedule a site visit as soon as you um, as soon as you've received your your equipment or concurrently with your claim. And we've been pretty good about getting out uh, to these sites. Um, finally, we can conduct site visits in the manufacturer. I do that a lot with the school buses. I have a good relationship with Thomas and. Um, and whites, and and I go out to their site, and and often you you might submit a claim, and you will I will tell you that I've already seen your bus, but I don't have to come see it. Um, so I'm able to do a lot of those site visits at the manufacturer, and um, for some of these heavy duty vehicles, we can also do that too, because a lot of those manufacturers and dealers are in High Point or in Greensboro, which may be closer than where you are. The only exception to this 
if you have electric infrastructure uh, that accompanies your vehicle that we funded, we must go see the vehicle at the site. So we will be coming to your site uh, to visit you. Um, and uh, so as soon as you have the infrastructure and the vehicle charging, then we can arrange a site visit. All right, so more information after today. Um, we have some frequently asked questions. You can always email our service email. You can always email me if you're in DIRA um, or School Bus or Matthew if you're in the clean heavy duty. Um, and I think that's it. I will pass it along to um, Stephen. He's going to talk to you a little bit. He's going to talk to you about the infrastructure side of what it takes to um, have a claim. And there you go, Stephen. All right. Thank you, Sheila, and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as we transition to what is needed for EV infrastructure claims, I first wanted to outline the difference um, between the Volkswagen infrastructure programs and the length of time each program provides for a project to be completed. The public access, MUD, and workplace level two program rebates are good for 548 days or one and a half years from the day a fully executed agreement was signed by an awardee and by North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality. The level two state agencies, the DC fast priority corridor and existing sites upgrades, as well as the diesel vehicle replacement programs guaranteed an awardee funding through executed contracts. And these lasted between two and three years it is important to know when your rebate or your contract expires since all work must be completed on your project and a claim for reimbursement must be submitted in the GMS before that date. If there's a question about your project's expiration date, please contact your program manager. And to submit a complete EV char charging infrastructure claim for reimbursement, the following documentation is required. This checklist is readily available on DAQ's Air Quality Grants Claims webpage. We'll talk about these items in the following slides. The EV infrastructure aspect of your project falls under the Diesel Vehicle Replacement Program. Uh, I will cover those requirements um, on an upcoming slide. We will have that checklist coming up after the EV infrastructure. And as uh, Sheila mentioned uh, earlier, uh, we will need an updated North Carolina substitute W-9 form to process your claim uh, that is ha has been added to these checklists, um, but with a transition um, of accounting systems when it comes to reimbursement, uh, we are being asked for that information again. So I understand it might be an inconvenience, but as part of your claim, we will need those updated new North Carolina substitute W-9 forms. So first on the checklist is a payment request letter. Uh, we'd seen this before with the diesel slides, but the template is here uh, and the template is available to download on the claims webpage. Um, the project's authorized representative will just need to fill in the awarded organization's information and use the organization's letterhead. Here are two examples of acceptable vendor invoices. These can come in a variety of layouts depending on the company doing the work, but they should all be itemized and reflect the eligible expenditures of your project. Here we see two methods of providing proof of payment in your claim. Again, we understand that there can be a variety of ways to prove a payment was made. But if there is a need for clarification or supplemental information in order for DEQ to process a reimbursement request, we will contact the project's authorized representative. Uh, in that case, awardees will have 10 business days to respond to any of our requests uh, before the claim is subject to being rejected and a new one would need to be submitted. Uh, we hate the idea of wasting anyone's time, so we would ask that 
when we have that request for additional information that uh, both parties work as fast as we can to get any any deficiency rectified. And when it comes to the proof of payment, um, just making sure that we see the awarded organization's information so that we know the organization that was um, supposed to be paying for the project is the one that in fact paid for the project. And uh, here is the NCDAQ Form 002 EV Infrastructure Certificate of Installation. In addition to the site and vendor information that is needed uh, at the bottom or about halfway toward the bottom, it states uh, that photos of the EV charger screen, the EV charger model and serial number, the on-site signage, and the overall EV charging site are required as part of a claim. These photos are needed to verify the installation has been completed, and we're going to go over example of those photos right now. Uh, so we want to see that each charger is in fact in the ground and fully operational. These photos let DEQ know that the chargers are ready to be used. Uh, here on the left, we see a DC fast charger. On the right, we see a level two charger. Next, we're going to need photos of each charger serial number. Each manufacturer displays the serial number in a different way, but they are typically found on a product sticker or accessible in the charger software. Uh, please make sure that the information is clear and easily identified before attaching photos to your claim. As Sheila said, we uh, just want to make sure that we get the, the number uh, clear and identifiable up front. Uh, each program has different site signage and stenciling requirements that we will need photos of. Uh, at a minimum, each site must have on-site signage with the following language. This project made possible in partnership with the state of North Carolina. On-site signs must be metallic, be at least 12 by 18 inches, and have a minimum text size of 1.28 inches in height. Uh, these are standard sign dimensions and uh, be mounted on a post at the charger's parking spaces. Uh, please review your Volkswagen program's RFP to find the full list of site requirements and uh, all requirements must be met prior to a reimbursement occurring. The last type of claim photo that we need is of the overall charging site. This will help the EQ locate the chargers during the site visit if multiple locations were included in a single awarded application, each location will need its own set of photos. So again, we see a general DC fast charging site, uh, a general level two charging site, and on the right is a recently completed project uh, where we have the, um, the EV infrastructure in place for the school bus. Uh, finally, each claim will need a completed Duke Energy Make Ready Credit certification form, as well as a final project report attached. For anyone that has not already heard, Duke is offering their own EV charging infrastructure incentive, which you can find out more information by using the link in this slide. Each awardee will need to inform DEQ on if they received a credit from Duke, and if so, how much that credit was worth. Uh, all of the required forms can be found on the Volkswagen Claims webpage. And again, a, a link to that webpage is found in this slide. So, two things that aren't in the EV charging infrastructure checklist, but are in the program RFPs uh, as required are proof of a five year charging station equipment warranty and maintenance plan. Um, Additionally, in the DC FAST program, if uh, renewable energy credits are used, a signed cop, sign copy of the agreement, agreement for the duration of the warranty of the equipment be attached to the claim. For all project requirements, please RFP before submitting your claim. All right, so now we are looking uh, back at the diesel vehicle replacement documentation checklist. 
If you also know, we have a replacement project, which includes EV infrastructure. You will need to include a photo to include of any and all charger screens being powered on, uh, the, uh, the number of any chargers, the overall trait, and then uh, again in a uh, completed Duke credit form. Uh, these will be required along with the other documentation invitation in this checklist. So the only way for your project to get certifications with the grant management system and system, and we'll see how to navigate through that process in just a few minutes. Uh, but send in your program manager documentation in an email or send a request payment in the mail, among other methods awardees have tried, will not be considered as proper requests. Um, and all documentation from the checklists that we covered must be attached to your claim, not attached to the application or to the agreement, uh, both of which are also found in the grant management system. We want everything condensed in the claim form in the GMS and ideally in one single PDF. Um, if it can't be in a single PDF, as Matthew mentioned earlier, we do want these files named as clearly as possible, but uh, if the photos and the various documents could be combined in a PDF and then uploaded in a single file to your claim, that would be very convenient. I know we would appreciate that very much. Uh, as Sheila mentioned earlier, for diesel projects, there are site visit requirements for EV infrastructure projects as well. Uh, DAQ staff will perform site visits at all of the EV stations to verify installation and operation of the infrastructure prior to approval of any claim. Um, and with this being a needed part of the project, DAQ must be granted access to the charging site or the various charging sites. And I wanted to show this table again, uh, table again uh, really to emphasize all Volkswagen projects must be completed before a claim for reimbursement can be approved, um, and that all Volkswagen rebates and contracts have a certain length of eligibility before they're no longer considered valid. Uh, again, if you have any questions about when your contract or rebate is set to expire, please review your award acceptance documentation. And if you can't find that documentation, or if it is for whatever reason not clear, uh, please contact your program manager. And if you have any questions following today's webinar, you can visit the frequently asked questions sections of the level two and the DC fast and the diesel web pages uh, using the links in these slides. Uh, you won't find uh, if you don't find your answers there. Uh, you can certainly email your questions to DAQ NC underscore. BW grants at deq.nc.gov. And uh, this concludes the EV infrastructure portion of today's webinar. I'm now going to turn the presentation over to Dave Willis, who will navigate through the process of submitting a claim in the grant management system. Thank you, Stephen. Um, I'll pull my slides up. And okay. So the grant management system, let's um, just talk about that in general for a second. There's two acronyms we need to go over. Um, the EBS, I know Matthew mentioned this a little bit. The um, EBS stands for Enterprise Business System. It is the framework for the state's implementation of a single repository for all um, grants that the state gives out, broadband grants, water infrastructure grants. Um, there, there's, as I meant, statewide. So the Volkswagens fall under um, the EBS system and is housed there. So as Matthew and Stephen both said, and Sheila, the, the grant management system, we call it the GMS, um, is predominantly for Volkswagen and Deere grants. Um, your screen um, will look like this when you first log in to the EBS. Then you'd have to click the tile 
um, for, that says Division of Air Quality uh, grants. Now, what the biggest um, hurdle that we all have to um, get past is what happens if you can't log in? Um, your NCID credentials basically expire every three months. Um, due to the nature of some of these projects, a lot of people don't log in, but once a year or um, six months, it just depends on how long since you've applied, you submitted your last documentation to now you're ready to file a claim. So we're going to walk through how to fix this. First, almost all of, as a state employee, almost all, everything I log into is through using our NCID, our email, our computers, everything. Um, and they've implemented that into the EBS um, system. So if you are you can't log in, first check your um, NCID, your username, and your password at the NCID portal, which is ncid.nc.gov. Once you can log in there, you should be able to log in at the EBS or the grant management system. If for some reason that doesn't work, what you'll need to do is go in and reset your password. There's a um, self-service through the NCID portal where you can reset your password. And again, if it's been longer than three months since you've logged in, it might be best practice just to go ahead and change that password. Um, give it about 60 seconds, close all your browsers. This will clear out all the cache sessions of previous um, GMS instances, and then reopen that browser. Um, if that lets you in, that's great. It, it worked as a expected. Sometimes admit, computer systems mess up. If that still doesn't let you in, there's an e EBS support email that you'll need to send. Um, please include a phone number where you can be reached. And it would be best if the email that is coming from is associated with your NCID. So um, for me, that would be dave.willis at uh, deq.nc.gov. So give them your username. Please do not include your password. So they'll need two things, your phone number and your NCID username. Um, and they'll walk you through the process of getting that, um, those, the NCID and the EBS systems reconnected. Now, if you're a brand new user, you're going to have to create an NCID. And sometimes there are instances where you will have to um, create a new NCID. Um, so we've got a guide on how to create an NCID here. And we also have the requirements. It's basically your first initial, your last name, and a number if um, necessary. Um, you would also have to um, create a, for new access or um, an access that has been deleted, you'll have to request access again. And that's the link to that. And that's just a web form. And I can show you that here. Um, you just remember when you do this, we are the Division of Air Quality. We're not any of the other, we're not the Governor's Crime Commission or the Broadband. We're the Division of Air Quality, um, and that will cover the Volkswagen and the Deer grants. Um, so, let's see. So, the, um, like that. Once you complete your access request, if you're a new user or a user that has expired, um, we process it the same way we always have. Um, we might have to request a W-9 again. Um, the W-9s have to be within a year. And then for our financial services, uh, Sheila mentioned it. Um, but one of the things that we're having to do with our new financial system is that if your W-9 is older than a year, we have to get a new W-9. And it would have to be dated and signed with the current date, not your old one. Um, so, great. We're in the grant management system. Now, Dave, were you supposed to be showing the um, online access application? You didn't show that screen. Oh, it didn't. It didn't. Sh you don't see the um, the access form now? No. Hmm. 
It's still on the PowerPoint presentation. Oh. Uh, okay, so it's only showing the screen. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Let me stop sharing for just a second and see if I can share just the screen because I thought um, screen two. Okay, now you should see. Yeah, we see it now. Okay, so thank you because I was I'm going to show one more um, thing on the screen as well. So on the when you follow the link to the EBS request, the grant management. And see, this is where we get our acronyms mixed up for us internal and people external. You're, act, you're requesting access to the grant management system, which is part of the EBS. So for air quality, we are the division of air quality, and then it changes a couple boxes and the things you have to do. You do have to have your NCID and know a few things. If you've previously logged in the grant management system, you'll need to know, remember that NCID. Um, if you don't know it, you'll need to put in comments down here that you don't know it or for some reason you've lost it. Um, but you'll have to have your tax ID from your W-9 that you're sending us. And Brian, if you could just let me know, we are seeing the presentation now? Yes. Okay, perfect working as expected. Okay, so once you get into the grant management system, you'll see the the top, actually you're in the EBS at this point. Um, you'll see our tile to the Division Air Quality Grants. You would click on that tile and it would let you into the grant management system. So just like to point out first, um, we do have a training library that walks through, through most of the items that you can um, just take a little tutorial through. I know we're not doing that many applications now, um, but in the future, if you're applying for a deer or anything else, this will actually walk you through. I'll show you that now. Um, so when you open it, it just opens up to the DAQ grant management system tutorial. So if you wanted to walk through the one that was for submitting a claim, you can just click that. And then you could play all the way through that. And we're going to walk through that um, a little bit differently, um, just give you some be best practices on how to do that. But I just want to make sure everybody knew that that was a resource that we had available. So in the grant management system, now you've logged in, you've done everything. Um, Let's go. Yep, done that one. Okay, so now you're in, you're in the training library. Um, you can see all of the grant management system. So, there we go. Okay, my slides were not advancing. You're basically here to figure out how to create a claim. So, this, this one's pretty easy. Um, create new claim. When you click on create new claim, it's going to bring you to this um, search screen. You're going to search for your agreement. The only agreements that are going to show up are the agreements you have access to. So if you've only got one agreement for your business entity, you're only going to see one agreement. If you have 10 or 12, um, you're going to have all of those. It might be helpful if you knew your agreement ID, but you don't have to. If you just click search, it's going to show you all the ones that are available. So if you know, you see these are from our test system. We we did test this system pretty thoroughly. Um, our descriptions might not have been the best at times, but we did go through and do um, agreements and claims on this. So you'd select your agreement that you're in this blue text. You would just click on the one you want, and then it's going to open up to a blank claim form. It's going to pre-fill all your application information, um, and then it's going to ask you 
for a few items. So your reimbursement number, start there. You should always enter one. Um, this is just the number of claims. I wish this was automated, but it didn't really work out that way. Your reimbursement number is not your tracking number or anything like that. It's just which claim is this? Is this the first claim or second claim, third claim? Um, so that can get a little bit tricky for some of the bigger projects. But for most of them, we're doing, we have to have the project all the way in the ground, all the way completed, and then we're going to reimburse you basically 100% of the funds. So you would enter one or two, depending on which claim this is. Now for the dates, it works best. The date from is technically supposed to be your agreement date. So whenever you had a signed and executed agreement, that would be the date that should go there. But it works if you put today's date in both of these fields. If you have any comments like your tracking, um, your project number, something that you have internally to track this, you can put that in the comments. Then it's there. Um, the claim amounts. So on this, this is, has had a previous claim already of 100000 125000 actually. So they have a balance of 225,000 left that they can claim as long as they can submit documentation to prove that. So in this one, the only thing you would do would put up to 225,000 in the request payment field. And then this last box, this date here, all these are calculated by the way automatically that you'd only fill the enter the request the payment portion. In the date, you just put today's date again. Now, it's our suggestion that you submit this at this point. We've run into this several times where if you click save, then you have to go back in and edit the claim and submit it anyway. It's best from, a, from our standpoint if you submit it. You haven't submitted any documentation. That's fine. We're going to cover that in just a second. When you submit that, you're going to get a little pop-up that says your claim has been successfully submitted. Um, your claim ID is 3001, whatever. It's all the claims. Agreements end and start in one. Um, agreements start with a two and claims start with a three. Um, just for those people that were interested. You can, if you already have your documentation, um, in a PDF, you can take that single PDF and choose file, find it, and attach it at this point. That's not, I don't like doing it that way. It's a little bit limited. Um, really, what you what's easier is if you come back in at this point, you've submitted your claim. Now you're viewing the claim, and this is where the three the three claim buttons links really create a new claim. You do that once for each claim. If for some reason we return your claim or you didn't submit your claim, you would have to go back in and um, submit your claim. View claim is what we would suggest at this point because we've already submitted it. Hit click view. It's going to come up with the search again. Just hit search. It's only going to show the claims that you have. So, and they're, they have a date that they're changed on. So you would be able to see. Um, when they were created, and you can sort them if you have a lot of claims, a lot of different sites, or a lot of different projects. Um, but if you just hit search, you don't have to put your claim ID or your agreement ID or your grantee ID or anything. Just hit search, and it's going to only show you the things that you're able to see. So this is the actual system, what it looks like when you're viewing the claim. It gives you all the all of your pre-filled information, which we've um, Redact it out. Um, it gives you your agreement number, the contact person. It gives all that information for us so we see it. We can see the requested payments, the total payments that have been made, and if there are any balances. And, oop, oop. Well, that went way too fast. Uh, sorry about that. Um, Okay, so, and this is, you do have to scroll down. This is actually um, a pretty long screen. So as you scroll down, if you notice, you can see attachments. 
Um, this is where you can make your attachments. You can drag them over and drop them in this space here. And that's the easiest way to do attachments. Having done 30 applications in phase one when we entered them into the system, um, it is definitely the easiest way to enter attachments in. You can also browse and then upload them individually. It'll give you a little pop-up window. Um, so at that point, your in this case, they called it the DEQ submission packet for, and this stands for um, Cape Hatteras Electric Member Cooperatives, and that's their Avon Peer site. So you might not understand that, but it was enough for me. And I've, we had a lot of projects with the EMCs, with the Electric Member Cooperatives. So um, we also keep notes in there about the projects that you will be able to see. So if we find something that's deficient, we're going to put it there. But we're also going to reach out to you. We're not going to leave you high and dry and guess um, what's wrong with our application. So at this point, you've uploaded your documents, you sent it to us. It's going to, once you upload, once you click submit, it shows up in our workflow and we're going to be looking at it. Um, might not be the same day, but once you get those documents in, we're going to definitely be taking a look at those. So again, it's just our recommendation that don't use save. Um, it's not the same as submit. If you use save, then you have to use edit claim. It's just easier in your flow is to submit the claim. If we find anything, we're not going to um, reject everything outright. We're going to contact you and work with you on how to get these things fixed. We're, we're about getting rid of this money and not holding on to it. So we do have um, checklists. Um, everybody's showing you those. And the links in this will go live. Um, we'll export this out as a PDF. So the links will be live in this. And we have a lot of links um, in this uh, presentation. So for the diesel, it's a little bit longer. You have a little bit more um, detail on the photos. You have your old vehicle and your new vehicle you have to take pictures of. Just want to remind everybody about the W-9s. That's going to be pretty important um, with our new financial system. If your W-9 is over a year old, which I know for the TC Fast, almost all of mine will be. And so for the checklist for the DC Fast and the Level 2 stuff, um, it's a little bit shorter because we don't have the double set of photos that you have to take. But we do need to see um, photos of the screen powered on, the overall site, the serial number, um, and the EV signage, if you have local signage on your site. Um, and that Duke Energy Make Ready credit, don't skip over that because it's free money for anybody that's putting in um, electric vehicle infrastructure. Um, I mean, all it takes is about 10 minutes to fill that form out. It's really not complicated and it's very straightforward. Um, so again, Sheila Berlanchard is the school bus program manager. Um, right now, Brian Phillips, our supervisor, is going to be the contact for the transit bus program. Matthew Hodgkins is the clean heavy duty diesel program. I'm Dave Willis, and I'm the DC Fast Program Manager, and Stephen Rice is the Level 2 Program Manager. And again, all these links will be live in the presentation um, when we export that out, so you'll be able to use all these links in here. And then um, we've also included links um, for all the documents that are part of the claim. Just remember to go through your checklist, um, and those, if you get them off the website, um, those links are live as well in those documents. So how do you find our website? You can either Google for NC uh, Volkswagen Settlement, or you can use this link when it's live. So right now I'm going to turn this over to Brian, and um, he is going to moderate our question answer session. Thank you, Dave. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Brian Phillips, the Mobile Source Compliance Sprint Supervisor. I am not seeing any questions in the Q&A at the moment. Uh, I do have a few questions I can start out with. Um, the first question, I created a claim, but it did not complete, but I did not complete it. How do I go back to my unfinished claim? Dave? 
So to go back to your claim, you would, I can scroll back up. I mean, you would have, like we talked about, you would have to edit that claim and those are too small. I am not doing the right screen because I am presenting. So, so if you saved it, um, you would have to use the edit claim form and the, the edit claim form search is the exact same as the view claim. It's just you're going into it and you're only able to edit the top portion of your claim. So it's going to look like this. That's all you're going to see when you go into the edit. You can't see the attachment buttons or anything like that. You can only edit these, this top portion of your claim. All right, I do have one question in the chat box. Uh, this infrastructure information applies to all grants is the question. I received the VW grant. So Dave or Sheila or Matthew, you wanna tackle that question? Sure, I mean, yeah, I mean, all, all the grants in the grant management system, the claims are processed the same way. Um, the only thing that's going to be different, you can see on this one, it's an infrastructure project. Um, this one is a, a diesel replacement um, and it has infrastructure. So it has two lots. Unfortunately for the DC fast um, and the level two stuff, it's broken out a little bit more. You'll have a few more um, line items in your budget. So you, instead of having one for diesel equipment and Two for the infrastructure for the the DC fast. You might have construction costs and a few other things that would go on top of that. But yeah, they're all pretty much the same and they process the same way in the system. Yeah, um, just for the vehicle projects, uh, the science requirements are not a requirement for those projects. That's just for the DC fast and our level two infrastructure programs. Sheila, did you have anything else you want to add to that question? Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. We have another question um, for agencies that has completed projects and has successful stories to include, I guess, assume with reimbursements. Do you have the infrastructure costs of the charges design and build of the projects? It may be a state agency question for Stephen. I'm sorry, Brian, can you repeat that? Sure. Uh, for agencies that has completed projects and has successful stories to include with reimbursements, do you have the infrastructure costs of design charges, design and build of the projects? I guess some do you include the cost infrastructure? Uh, Juan, could you elaborate a little bit more on your question? It, yeah, if the, if the question Kind of boils down to do the cost or does the cost information need to be included in the success story? I would say it does not inherently need to be in there. Uh, we will get that cost information in other forms to help process the claim. The success story is something that you would want uh, anyone that stumbled across the Volkswagen website and stumbled across you know a blurb about your project to know about your project. So if for whatever reason you want the cost to be part of it, you are more than welcome to include it. We, uh, if we review it and we see that's missing, I don't think anyone's going to come back and make you put it in. Um, but again, the success story is just a way to put your best foot forward for your project so that if you're wanting to show it off or if you're wanting other people to see it and see how cool it is, um, that type of information is what you would put uh, in the forefront. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, I mean, we have all the everyone muted. So if you want to elaborate, you can elaborate through the um, chat or you can reach out directly to Stephen for uh, an offline chat. Um, our next question, I missed information on how to get access to the grant management system. I currently have access to EBS. Can you review how to get access to the system? Dave? Sure, I'm, I'm pulling up that slide. Um, so basically, if you already have access to the EBS, you would only have to do the GMS access request, 
which here I can sh share. There will be a link in the um on this slide, which I'm not sharing yet, but. Share screen too. Okay, so um, basically on slide, I can't see it, 47, um, there's a link to the um, EBA, the GMS access request form. It's also on our website. Um, so if you already have an NCID and you can log into the NCID um, portal, then you would just use that to submit the um, EBS request form. When you're filling it out, just remember to select the drop down box for uh, Department of Air Quality. Um, and that would be it. All right, thank you, Dave. Let's see our next question. Uh, two separate visits are required for VW grant projects is the question. I have one VW grant, which includes vehicles and infrastructure. Uh, Sheila? No. If you have an electric vehicle with infrastructure, we see the electric vehicle hooked up to the infrastructure. That is one uh, site visit and should be one claim. If you have multiple electric vehicles with their associated infrastructure, and you and you submit a claim for each of those vehicles, yes, we will have to go see each of those vehicles for each of those claims. All right, thank you, Sheila. Uh, next question, I guess this would be for either Sheila or Stephen. Can you repeat what suffices for proof of payment? I'll start off and Sheila, if you feel the need to fill in the gaps, that's fine, but uh, proof of payment could be anything from the documentation from the vendor you used uh, that provided the invoice saying that the uh, balance of that invoice was paid. Uh, other forms would be a canceled check. Um, honestly, that's probably one of the most complete forms of proof of payment, seeing that it has the amount that was paid and it has who paid all included in the same um, uh, same piece of documentation. Uh, another could be uh, a, uh, maybe a screenshot or some kind of copy of uh, digital uh, bank transaction information. But at the end of the day, um, what we're looking for would include who paid the amount and what amount was paid. And again, we're going to want to see that correlate with an invoice, which is a separate piece of required documentation. All right, let's see. Our next question is uh, from Jeff Moore. For an EV school bus project, do you have to wait until the project is complete before submitting claims for reimbursement? Sheila? Hey, Jeff. Uh, yeah. Um, and I mean, you can submit your claim um, if you have paid for the, for the infrastructure and the, the thing, but it, it's going to sit there until I go see the bus plugged into the infrastructure. So, um, yes, essentially you will, you have to wait until the project is complete before submitting the claims. All right, I don't see any new questions pop up yet. So I'll go from our list here. Uh, once we destroy the old diesel vehicle and provide photo evidence of destruction, are we allowed to scrap the vehicle and keep the proceeds? Sheila? Yes, you may scrap the vehicle and keep the proceeds. We don't, you don't need to report that to us or anything. And are they allowed to keep parts of the vehicle for uh, surplus for other vehicles? Yeah, you may, um, you know, the engine and the chassis cannot be reused. I guess you can use that for steel. Um, but yeah, you can, you can certainly take parts off of a bus or take parts off of a vehicle to, to use on another vehicle. All right. Thank you, Sheila. Um, our next question, what happens if the project cannot be completed before the agreement or contract expires? And I guess it can be for anyone. All 
All right, I'll answer it then. Okay. Uh, at least 30 days prior to your agreement or contract expiration date, you should contact your program manager of the situation. Um, we will work with you to extend the contract as necessary. Uh, you will need to provide us supporting documentation in writing as to why the project cannot be completed before the agreement or contract expires. All I right. just want to add that this is the reason why we have the quarterly reports so that you can keep us apprised of any of these issues that may be arising um, so that we can really get in front of in front of these before uh, before any problems arise. Thank you, Sheila. Let's see, we have a question from Missy Davis. Uh, what happens if your bus is not delivered on time? Would the project still be okay? Sheila? I do not know what you mean by delivered on time. Uh, as long as the project is completed before the end of the contract date, or if you have talked to us about getting a contract extension, um, the project will be okay still. Thank you, Sheila. Let's see. I don't see another new question in the chat box yet. Let's see. Can we request an advance payment? Uh, no, this is a reimbursement program. So you are required to purchase the equipment and provide proof of payment for reimbursement. Um, so that's uh, the answer to that question. Our next question is C. Will the link to watch this uh, be available to participants? Uh, yes, we will send out a follow up email to all the participants of this webinar uh, once our website has been updated with the recording and also um, when the uh, PDF version of this presentation is available on the website as well. Uh, let's see, I don't see any other questions. Well, uh, on behalf of the VW team, uh, I'd like to thank you all for attending this webinar. Uh, if you still have questions about submitting claims, I do encourage you to reach out to your program manager, um, Matthew, Dave, Stephen, Sheila, or myself. Uh, again, I am um, interim, uh, the interim transit and shuttle bus program uh, program manager as Melanie Henderson has retired from DAQ. So I'll be taking over until um, we have a replacement in-house. Um, can I add something? Sure. The DERA program is open, the RFP is open, so if you're looking to replace uh, a vehicle under using the Diesel Emissions Reduction Act state grants, um, just want to let you know that that, that RFP is open um, and let me know if you have any information or any uh, any questions. Thank you, Sheila. All right, and we, we will be having a couple of webinars for that program. The first one will be in December, uh, and that information is on our DERA website, um, and you can reserve a spot for that webinar. Let's see, uh, another question for Rodney Harrison. Would this link, where would the link to the session be located? Um, this link will be on our claims page. Let me pull it up and see if I can share my screen right quick. Let's see, share. So this is our main Volkswagen settlement page. If you scroll down, there's a submit project claim forms tile here, if you click this, We'll be adding a link down here for a new link down drop down for with the, today's dates uh, claims webinar. We'll have a copy of the recording here that you can watch and also a copy uh, a PDF copy of the presentation where you can actually use those links. Uh, you're not seeing my screen. Can you? Oh, sorry. Sorry, I did not have my screen. I'm sure. So if you go to our main Volkswagen settlement page. You scroll down, there is a tile for submit project claim forms. We will be adding the recording of this webinar as another drop down here. It will have the today's date on it. It will have the recording and also a copy, PDF copy of the presentation. Let's see, I have another question. This infrastructure information applies to all grants. Okay, I believe this is a repeat question. This infrastructure grant applies to all grants. I received the VW grant. Uh, Sheila, you wanna copy that again? Oh, I think we've addressed this. Uh, the infrastructure, um, with the vehicle 
yeah, the I mean the requirements for the infrastructure um, uh, claim information will be the same for what you need to provide for a vehicle and infrastructure uh, claim. Yeah, he, he said his vehicle quarter buff vehicles and infrastructure. So yes, only thing you don't have to do is have signage for your vehicles, Rodney. Um, and for those who didn't see the share screen, I'm gonna go back to the website. Um, we also have recordings from our previous uh, claim um, sessions back in phase one of VW. So you are more than welcome to rewatch re those as well. Um, we have it for the vehicle programs and we also have it for the DC fast and the level two programs. And we also have a link to all the required documentation here. All right, let's see, do we have any more questions? Is a transit bus project with purchase of BEB chargers and, des chargers and design and build of infrastructure? Um, Juan, I'm not understanding your question. If I'll put my um, email phone number in the chat for you and you can reach out to me privately and discuss. Let's see, the next question, does the walkthroughs have to be completed before the settlement expiration date or do claims just have to be submitted by that date? Um, Sheila, Stephen, Dave. I, I think I think the claim the claim has to be submitted before the expiration date of the contract. Uh, sometimes it takes us 20 uh, 10 to 15 days to set up a, a date to come see the the walkthrough. But the walkthrough can happen really any time you've taken delivery of the equipment and the infrastructure if uh, if eligible. Yeah, uh, very similar in the level two program. Uh, as long as your claim is submitted and it's a complete claim before your uh, rebate expiration or before the contract is set to expire, um, we certainly won't hold it against you if there's something on our end that prevents us from getting out to perform the site visit. Um, but again, we do try to get out there ASAP. We we want the reimbursement to occur as fast as possible, seeing that the awardee did the work and. And that's the whole point of the program. But um, as long as there is a claim submitted and that claim has all the documentation that's needed, considered complete, uh, you would be fine in that case. All right, thank you. And see, our next question is, how soon would this presentation be uploaded to YouTube? I guess, and also our website. Stephen, how long did it take the last time we did the um, claims presentation? Do you remember? Well, I, well, I don't remember specifically. What I can say is the second we conclude today, uh, WebEx starts processing the video. I will have a copy of the video in hand. I'll provide that copy to our public information officer. Uh, but if I'm not mistaken, our public uh, information officer uh, just had to just had his family and family. And he has been trying to work here and there and trying to get things done sooner rather than later. Um, suddenly, suddenly uh, even if we recalled back to the last time and thought about that time frame, I, I'm sure it will be a little bit different, but um, we will work to get uh, the video uploaded as soon as possible. Um, and then, of, of course, a PDF copy of the slides would be made available with that as well. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Um, this is the last question was, uh, can you please share the link uh, where the presentation will be uploaded? I'll drop that in the chat, question Q&A chat. If it'll let me send it, let's see. And it's not letting me send it. And we'll also, what we, what we can do is send a copy of the PDF presentation to everyone that's participating in the webinar um, as soon as we're done. Um, and then um, once the website is up, we can send another email saying the, web, the recording has been, it's now available on our website for you to view. Let's see, uh, next question. For level two chargers, we have three different locations. Will we submit a different claim for each location? Stephen? So if those three locations were from three separate awarded projects, again, three applications for three locations, each claim would then be sent separately if those three locations were all bundled into a 
uh, one single application, the claim would include all of those sites at once. Thank you, Stephen. I seem to be unable to drop the link. We'll put the link in the emails, everyone, to the um, claims site. Any other questions? We can give you three minutes back to your time. <laughs> Again, uh, we do appreciate you um, attending this uh, webinar with us. If you do have additional questions, please uh, contact your program manager. They'll, um, we'll all be happy to help you out any way we can. If you're having issues um, logging into the system, um, send an email to the service account or EBS support, as Dave had mentioned before in his presentation, and they'll work that out. If you're trying to, if you're new to the system, we have a page uh, for grant management for our grant management system. I'll show you that right now, and it goes through step by step instructions on how to request access to the system. So if you go to our main VW website. Scroll down to the very bottom, you see grant management system here. And it goes to the steps of how to register for NCID. How to request access to grant management system. And if you have a third party asking for access for another person. And has technical information, it also has a um, link to our. User manual. Right here. So there's a document, uh, I do encourage you all, if you don't have a copy of it, it goes through step-by-step -step with screenshots of how to submit claims. Um, so you can go here and it goes through each of the process of submitting claims. Let's see, I don't see any questions, so I think we can conclude today's webinar. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.